last time you were on, we covered the Taylor Lorenz saga, right? Uh, yes. For our uh, for our one million lo- lovelies. What? How does Russell Brand say it? <laughs> for anyway. Um, and I just want to remind people what happened, right? So Taylor Lorenz is this uh, celebrated uh, establishment journalist who was at the New York Times writing hit pieces on people on the front page. She would do things like listen in on conversations that people were happen, having, CEOs, and then report back who was using the R word or who was saying bad words. And she was getting it wrong, trying to ruin people's reputations. And that's her M.O. And uh, she- telling. She's a tattletale and she she gets printed on the front page of the New York Times and now the Washington Post. And for some reason, and she, but she's a big victim. Right. And so they keep trying to pretend like there's uh, she's a victim. In fact, in uh, NBC, they just did a whole segment on it. This was the segment. <laughs> Morgan Radford joins me now. She's been doing some reporting on the impact of this type of harassment, especially uh, the impact it has on women in journalism. Yeah, so they're doing some garbage segment, and here, here's some Their of online it. Online language. They tracked violent and threatening tweets directed at two female journalists after being targeted by two male media figures. So someone did a story about a news person, and that's what they call targeted. They were targeted. They, someone did a story about someone who's in, who is a... Uh, a cult- uh, a popular person in the culture that's what that's called and so then they try to pretend that when people tweet at you and say mean things that that's actual harassment that they have to be protected from violence and that's actual violence and now watch i'm not kidding i've had to remove every single social tie i had severe ptsd from this i i contemplated suicide it got really bad you feel like any little piece of information that gets out on you will be used by the worst people on the internet to destroy your life. Like you. She's she's the worst person on the internet. <laughs> Taylor Lorenz. Don't make any mistake about it. This is another uh, woman who's also upset that uh, that was happening. Or I don't I don't know if I I'm, I'm not supposed to say woman. She's a they them. That's what that's right. That's her pronoun. So uh, I'm, uh, so here Journalist. we go. And it's so isolating and terrifying. It's horrifying. I'm so sorry. <laughs> okay, sorry. and I'll, st- I'll to my grave. She was fake crying to my grave. So they're up. So now they're upset at this reporter for doing the story. <laughs> those two, these two people, those two journalists, the, the they them and um, Taylor Lorenz. And I just just so you know what this is. Shant Marsrobian got it perfect. He goes. The point of this is to silence certain modes of political speech by characterizing it as harassment and deploying groups of supposedly marginalized and oppressed people who aren't at all marginalized or oppressed, but are in fact elite enforcers of a dominant political regime. That's who she is. She's an elite enforcer of a dominant political regime. That's what Taylor Lorenz is. She's not a victim at all, even a little bit. Not I don't care how many mean things people have tweeted at her. That doesn't make you a victim. That's par for the course. And she's what she's upset at is the ba- is the equivalent of being upset at gra- graffiti on a bathroom wall. OK, that's what she's. Can you believe the stuff people are writing on the bathroom wall? Yeah, you got to go melt down over it. She is. So uh, Glenn Greenwald kind of explained it. Uh, he said it is almost impossible to envision a single individual in whom power, privilege and elite prerogative prerogative reside more abundantly than Taylor Lorenz. Using the metrics of elite liberal culture, the word privilege was practically invented for her. Why? <laughs> Why? Because uh, she was you know, from a wealthy family raised in Greenwich, Connecticut and educated at an actual Swiss boarding school. She now writes Jeez. about people's lives, often casually destroying those lives on the front pages of the most powerful East Coast newspapers on the planet. Uh, all of this is designed to fortify a warped and inverted matrix of power and morality. Somehow the bullies have converted themselves into the bullied. Your deepest concern and compassion must be directed to the richest, most powerful, and most privileged members of society. So that was very well said. Now here's the twist, Michael. Here's the twist to this story. So now M- NBC did this huge story trying to tell everybody that those women are victims and they need protection. And all, and those women went and cried and said that uh, it was horrible for them. They're afraid to write anymore. They said stuff like Chuck I'm not Todd was deeply concerned about this <laughs> massive societal issue and wanted to demonstrate how much of an ally he was for these beleaguered victims. And that, so 
Yes, the, the whole network was up in arms. <laughs> and they had a study. The study was done, I think, at NYU. I mean, the whole thing. And so guess what? Taylor Lorenz and that other journalist person turned on that female journalist from NBC. <laughs> they turned on her. You ready for this? Oh, I should have made this bigger. I'll read it to you. It says, if your segment or story on online harassment leads to even worse online harassment for your subjects, you effed up royally and should learn how to cover these things properly before ever talking about them again. Uh, now, isn't that going to get that other female journalist a lot of harassment online? Isn't that exactly what she's upset about other? So she's OK to do that to someone who does a story on her. But I get, again, it, if she she can do that. But if Glenn Greenwald does that to her, he's a misogynist and a racist and a harasser. If Tucker Carlson does that, the same thing she just did, that they do that to her, all the horrible things in the world. So they've turned on a female journalist at NBC for doing a story about her crying that she's a victim. You couldn't write this. This is a, so... Uh, I could teach an entire class on this stuff, she says. But the simple fact is that very few people in power in newsrooms actually understand how the modern Internet and online landscape works. And so they continually give ammo to bad actors. Yes, very few people in newsrooms understand how the modern Internet landscape works, Taylor. When you do a story on Taylor Lorenz, you have to not show any valid criticism of her or her entire bullshit narrative falls apart. Uh, Taylor, <laughs> just cut Chuck Todd a break. It's getting hard for him not to eat glue or stick crayons up his nose over there, okay? <laughs> And she's right about NBC's faulty reporting in that they kept referring to her as a journalist. So that would be their biggest problem. And even a dishonestly framed story like that one that was saying she was a victim, even a story like that, that is so dishonestly framed and it's, it's to make someone a some petty bourgeois bully like Taylor seem like a victim is still somehow not enough to actually make Taylor seem like a victim to me. Taylor, do you understand how wrong and unlikable you have to be for a mainstream fluff piece to still make you look like the villain that you are? The Azov Nazi battalion is literally an easier sell than Taylor Lorenz at this point. Uh, let me show you one more. She says, it's been a nonstop barrage of messages, articles on right wing news sites saying this stuff. What do you mean a barrage? You mean people are taking them to your apartment and dropping them off at your door? Or are they turning them into paper airplanes and throwing them through your window at your office? How are you being barraged? Are you going to the right wing news sites and reading them? Because that's the only way you would know about this stuff. And that's why I would advise you stop reading news articles about yourself because you're a big baby. Michael, would you like to say something about this? Well, I'm happy to just let you continue ranting because it's one of the most joyous experiences in my life to consume that content from you, Jimmy. But I, here, here's what the way I would put it, right? The whole premise behind that MSNBC segment, which, by the way, is one of the funniest segments I've ever seen on cable news, <laughs> is that this issue of online violence directed at female journalists is extraordinarily pressing and needs our undying concern, right? Because of how important it is. And <laughs> Taylor the Renz then functionally does the equivalent of what she's saying is totally unacceptable when it comes aimed at her by criticizing the female journalist who presided over the segment in that Taylor Lorenz is accusing her of Directing more harassment at Taylor Lorenz. So this MSNBC journalist is committing the very offense against Taylor Lorenz that was supposedly was <laughs> the entire impetus behind this segment in the first place. Right. So I, I part of me hopes that there was an intentional logic behind this because it would be extraordinarily humorous. But I kind of doubt it. I kind of think that they're so kind of mired in this weird circular logic that it, the boomerang always comes back to knock them off 
course, I, right? Well, um, and the the other thing with with this, let me just say, Michael, I guess did here is that I guess yeah. at Swiss boarding schools, the only thing they don't teach you is a uh, course in self awareness. Okay. <laughs> By the way, you know, if you were writing a comedy <laughs> sketch about like the quintessential example of a pampered elite journalist who has this victim complex, you would write, and it would almost seem a little bit too far fetched or too on the nose that they were from Greenwich, Connecticut, and they went to an actual Swiss, Swiss boarding, boarding school. school. But Taylor Lorenz, she just magically fits this exact criteria <laughs> that wouldn't, you know, again, if you submitted that script to like a Hollywood right. studio or something, they would say, you know, try to make it a little bit more Believable. ambiguous. Yeah. You know, don't just do the classic kind of prototype here. Uh, but the thing is, MSNBC, and you know, when last time I was on the show, I tried to make the point that notwithstanding how comical and ridiculous Taylor Lorenz often comes off as, she's actually a very influential and powerful figure within the industry because she's constantly catered to and even kowtowed to by her peers and colleagues, right? So the this whole framework that she's pioneered where she's constantly reporting on her own experiences yes. and this is like the number one injustice in the world, at least if you judge by her area of focus. Um, this is actually gains her a lot of traction within the industry and a lot of others try to emulate it and often to success. It helps them rise to the ranks of various media outlets because the incentive structure in the industry is fundamentally corrupted and perverse, right? So she makes maximum use of that. Um, and actually, notwithstanding how ridiculous this saga turned out to be with the MSNBC segment, it again underscores how paradoxically influential and powerful she continues to be, which is that when she started making this complaint and that basically she blamed MSNBC for her coming off, you know, in this very <laughs> yes. unsympathetic way, be, as though I, I guess maybe they forced her or drugged her to do that weeping little climax where she's saying it's so difficult and whatnot. I guess that was MSNBC's fault and not Taylor Lorenz's fault, notwithstanding that she's like a 38 year old professional journalist <laughs> and some of the most powerful you know, newspapers <laughs> in the country. But no, whatever, it backfired on her. She got a lot of online pushback and ridicule and scorn and stuff. So she tried to blame MSNBC. Yes. And then she got them, or I don't know if she specifically lobbied them to do this, but they took down the segment. They took off it of down. YouTube. They took I down. I went to go find it again just to amuse myself and, and, and rewatch it. <laughs> And I, I, lo and behold, MSNBC took down the video. Now, I would imagine that was because Taylor Lorenz's criticism of, NBC, of, of MSNBC holds a lot of water for them. She, with a, you know, a, a snap of her fingers, she can get a lot of stuff done. And so, you know, I, that's why, you know, I think it's actually useful to not just dismiss this whole mode of journalism as wholly farcical um, because it, within certain influential segments of society, it really does have a big influence. It does. And this doesn't diminish it. Taylor Lorenz is standing at all in their no. eyes. It actually, bizarrely enough, enhances it. Enhances. It. That's right. There's no such thing as bad press for a maniac like Taylor Lorenz, who's got a uh, histrionic victim complex. Uh, so she, here's another. She also tweeted this. She said, no need to tell me to keep my head up or stay strong <laughs> when it comes to online attacks. I'm great. Oh. I'm thriving. Oh. Yeah, I don't think so. That's why you're melting down over a sympathetic piece. You're melting down. You're not OK. You're not thriving. You're a Everyone maniac. I know who's thriving. Make sure to tweet. I'm thriving. thriving. <laughs> yes. Uh, I don't give a shit. How many people tell me to die on Twitter? If I cared about that, I wouldn't cover YouTubers for a living. Of course you care about that because you're tweeting about it and you're doing new segment after new segment about it and you won't stop complaining about it. Of course. So this goes to show you not only does she lack 100% self-awareness, she's a bullshitter and a liar. And I've showed you that before that she's a liar and a bullshitter and a hypocrite and one of the worst people on the internet. That who's that's who she is, but she's just a blatant liar. 
Uh, also, she says, instead of using me for clickbait, NBC News needs to educate their journalists on how to cover these types of campaigns. Their segment lacks crucial context and only serves to fuel the right wing smear campaign I've been dealing with for a year. What do you mean dealing? You have to deal with it. You mean, has it cost you your job? Has it cost you your nothing? It's cost you nothing. You haven't been having to deal with anything except read mean tweets. You know, and no one has to read mean tweets because you don't have to go on Twitter and you don't have to check your mentions. I don't check my mentions. There's lots of mean shit written about me every day by powerful people, not randos. And so, uh, also, you know, what 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 context was missing? What so-called crucial yes. context was missing that would have made her whole little, uh, you know, performance weeping episode look more defensible or, or or rational. I don't know what added context would have mitigated the ridiculousness of that little exercise. So what is she even talking about? I think she's just trying to, you know, clearly backpedal. Of course. She, scapegoat MSNBC for her own. Because she looked so ridiculous. Laughable performance. Yes, a laughable performance. Laugh. When she cried, I laughed. That was my right, nature. We, we, we laughed. That's we what laughed. We did. That was our reaction to laugh. I think seeing the large, her, the context she's referring to, Michael, I think is the, uh, seeing the larger picture that her shitty behavior can be used by the right to criticize her, which really isn't what context means anyway. But then again, Taylor thinks journalism means tattling about nonsense and destroying the lives of teens whose mom she dislikes. So that's why that. So here's one more. Let me show you this. And she retweeted it. So this was the other woman. I mean, uh, journalist uh, who was in that. That Remember, she was she was featured. I didn't show it, but she was sitting next to her. She she said that she couldn't write about things. Because she doesn't feel safe enough to write about things because people will say mean things about her on social media. So she doesn't feel safe enough to write about things. So I guess those things will never get written about. <laughs> so here I, I should have made this bigger. She says, really cool how a segment. This is her. Really cool how a segment about the harassment journalists faced. Uh, oh, no, this is her. Kate Sawson. She said, I really didn't want to get into this, but I don't know what to do. It's been five days since MSNBC published this piece on gender based harassed facing journalists and misgendered. And so she's upset that she was misgendered in that segment. And it's really bothering her, which she has a right to be, I guess. And this woman says, really cool how a segment about the harassment journalists faced has ultimately led to the said journalist being misgendered and harassed. What a dereliction of duty when we all know one of the most important parts of our jobs is to do no harm. This it never. So they're doing the exact thing to the female reporter at NBC that they're claiming is being done to them. That you couldn't write this if you like you. Uh. And then Let's down. just slowly explain this, Jimmy. What? So MSNBC did a segment yes. that was purportedly about how women journalists are suffering this epidemic of <laughs> violence and abuse online. And one of the examples featured in the segment of the individuals who were supposedly victimized by this abuse had to then come out days later and say, I actually don't identify as a woman. So they used the wrong example for their whole premise of the segment, <laughs> at least according to this person's gender identity. So they did not do the due diligence that uh, I guess have been done to kind of corroborate the whole. See, when you go. So I just my advice to that female reporter at NBC who did this bit or this segment uh, when you when you start to go down the woke rabbit hole, this is where it ends up. It all when you yeah. point the finger, you always have three pointing back at you. It's always going to come back at you. So this is what identity politics is all about. It's never about substance. It's all about my identity uh, supersedes any substance whatsoever, and that stops conversation. And that's what Taylor Lorenz is about. That's what that other journalist is about. That is not a woman even though she was featured in a thing by NBC News about women who are receiving harassment because they're women. She was featured in it, and she's not a woman. And, and another another point, Jimmy, and just from a more broad perspective, I think it's worth kind of highlighting why we're even interested in the story in the first place. It's not about Taylor Lorenz. No, no, no. You're right. Good thing you're saying. A pathological person who's right. 
one of the most you know ridiculous manifestations of this whole tendency within the industry right um but you know so i i know you don't look at your mentions or whatever i do most of the time because sometimes you actually get some decent information based on people trying to communicate with you and as a journalist i try to make myself as open as possible to people sending me stuff um but you know that also means that i'm exposed to the feedback that I received. And since this segment aired on MSNBC, I kind of half jokingly have collected a couple of examples of being told to kill myself or being told that I'm going to be tracked down and have my ass kicked by whoever. I mean, they're just trolls. I'm not claiming I'm a victim. I just wanted to note for posterity (laughs) that certain people and certain journalists are endowed with this somehow sacrosanct right to elevate their trolling as this matter of urgent societal importance, right? But others are not. And so why aren't these examples of people with like Ukrainian flag emojis in their display names who are telling me that they're going to track me down and and kick my ass? Why don't those rise to the level of meriting the concern of MSNBC producers? Well, it's because that quote unquote harassment or violence or whatever, and again, I'm not claiming I'm victimized, but whatever it is that I receive in, in that vein is not consistent with the dominant narrative that the corporate media overlords are seeking to promote. Whereas Tale of the Wrens, everything she does by talking about this scourge of you know right-wing populists who are bring to harm women or whatever, that is a very comfortable narrative for organizations in position to power these days to hype to the maximum extent. Whereas if I were to show examples of Ukrainian whoever with the display na- the flag in their emoji in their uh, display name, uh, acting in a way that is indicative of a predilection maybe toward violence, that's totally verboten, right? I mean, that that is not at all consistent with the dominant narrative that the U.S. government and European governments and the NGOs and the defense contractors and the court and the media that is not at all consistent with the narrative they're trying to promote. And really, so that's all it is. It's a power play. It's what 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 do we can what can we seek that is fodder for our promotion of the latest dominant narrative? And what can we exclude that could maybe contradict our preferred narrative? That's the that's the dividing line. It has nothing to do with the harassment per se. So the reason that this story is significant and the reason why this tactic that elite journalists employ is significant is because it's just another means by which they're asserting their power. They're asserting their dominion over the rest of us by trying to beckon everyone to have sympathy for them. That's right. And not have sympathy toward others who experience the same thing, but are undesirable politically or culturally or even socioeconomically or in any other way that doesn't conform with the kind of paradigm of journalistic accomplishment that somebody like Taylor Lorenz embodies. Well, let's just remember what this is all about. So it's it's it, right, just like you said, it, this really isn't about Taylor Lorenz. She's just the one who's employing it the most successfully and loudest of anybody. It's about this. The point of this is to silence certain modes of political speech by characterizing it as harassment and deploying groups of supposedly marginalized and oppressed people who aren't at all marginalized or oppressed, but are in fact elite enforcers of the dominant political regime. That's who she is. She's an elite enforcer of the dominant political regime, and this is to stamp out any criticism of them and shut down dissent. We're doing live stand-up shows in Cleveland, Columbus, Pittsburgh, Des Moines, Omaha, Kansas City, Las Vegas, all over the country. Go to jimmydorcomedy.com for a link for tickets. And single tickets now available at all venues. So if you tried to buy one before and you couldn't, single tickets are now available. Plus, while you're at JimmyDorkConry.com, why don't you become a premium member? Sign up to our mailing list so when they cancel us, we can still stay in touch. Mm-hmm.